So I recently replaced the knife that I had been carrying for 10 years. And, you know, like a lot of you, I always carry a knife. And it got me thinking. One of the biggest questions that I get on this channel is, I like your apron, where did you get the holster square? Where do you, well, you know, what do you keep in there? That kind of thing. So today I wanted to talk about woodworking EDC. What do I use every day? What is always in my apron? And for some of you, that may be what's always on your bench. In fact, I'd love to see some other woodworkers talk about what they just always have on their bench or in their tool pouch or in their apron. So Chris Salamone, Matt Cremona, John Malecki, and of course, Sean Boyd. Let's make a video. Let's see what you can't live without, what you use every single day. So let's come on into the bench and we'll talk about what I got in here. All right, now this is my apron and I have not cleaned it out. I didn't organize it. This is just how it was last time I stopped working. Now there's two things I do want to mention, honorable mention, if you will, is a block plane. This is a new one I just got. It's a wood river block plane. It has this really cool lever cap that I love. It's just a, there's no screw. It's just cantilevered in just like that, which is neat. I don't keep it in my apron because it's super nice and you know, once you get it aligned, you don't want to bang it around. And then another thing that I want to give honorable mention that I don't use every day, but I use pretty much every week. And this is the super cheap hole guide. And I use this for drilling holes, for plugs, for screws, when I'm putting together shop furniture. This is what I do to pick my drill bits. So I'll take the screw and find the last hole that it doesn't fit in. And then I'll use that size drill bit to drill my holes. Less stress on wood, no splitting. And it's a great easy way to not only if you have, you know, I'm sure that you guys are perfect and all your drill bits are organized. But for me, mine sometimes end up sitting in a drawer and I don't know what size they are. So this is a really quick, easy way to find the sizes of round objects. So I use this all the time. Uh, everything that I talk about in this video will be linked down in the description. So if you're wondering where I got anything, that's where it'll be. So this is my apron. This is how I normally use it. I didn't empty it out. I didn't even clean it out. In fact, you can see it is probably full of sawdust, but uh, this is the stuff that I use every day and I regularly clean it out of the specialty tools that I don't use that often and make sure it's just bare bones because when you're working for eight hours you know if you have extra weight you notice it at the end of the day when you go to bed so it's important to keep it clean now i did a video on this apron in early 2018 i'll link it down below but that was the the video where i bought this apron it's a wax canvas apron which i love because i don't really care about it but i but it's very sturdy it's not like a fancy custom leather apron that I would be worried about wiping glue on, for example. So um, I bought this apron and then <laughs> proceeded to bedazzle it in my first foray into leather working. These are super useful and I love them. And you guys see me use this all the time in my videos, uh, my combo square and my marking knife. And the reason that I wanted to make them out of leather and add these onto my apron is these are nice. They're very expensive. This is a Star 8 Combo Square. It comes in at like 92 bucks. Um, but I use it all the time. So I wanted to not just stick it in my pocket and keep it at the ready at all times. And then again, with your marking knife, this isn't a particularly fancy one or anything, but you know, I don't want the tip poking me or I used to keep it up here in my apron and I would get a hole right here all the time from shoving it in and out. Yes, I know. So I made this leather case for both of them. And the reason I put them here and here, and this is something to think about if you have a tool pouch or a tool apron is, I always grab this with my left hand because I'm right-handed. And so I grab my marking knife with my right hand. So it's really easy to, while I'm holding a piece, to grab my square, pull it out, and then reach for my marking knife. And that way, I don't end up getting crossed up, that kind of thing. So after the marking knife and combo square, the next thing that I use all the time is my pencils and my layout square. This is a Veritas layout square. This is great because it lays flat on things. When you have your combo square, it always has to be up against an edge. Otherwise you have you know, a quarter inch of gap between your ruler and where you're writing. So when I need to lay out things, I use this all the time. And this is great for laying out mortises, for dovetails, for dividing equally where you want to put things. So uh, here's a good little trick. If you want a number of something, let's say three, you divide the total length by four because it's going to include the end of your board in the measurement. If you divide by four, you get equally spaced three things. So I use this all the time. It is great. I think I got this from 
the samurai carpenter and he said this is indispensable and he was right it is just great it's great because you can quickly measure stuff in the middle of boards with you know your combo square without having to pull the ruler out and it's square it's straight i love this thing and i use it all the time my pencils are mechanical i have a 0.5 and a 0.7 uh, 0.7 works much better on, you know, a little bit rougher lumber, stuff I haven't sanded. 0.5 if I'm doing fine layout where I'm not using my market knife, which is rare. Uh, but either one's fine. They're about the same, 0.7, 0.5. I'll link these. These are great pencils. And I think for like eight bucks, you get six of them and enough lead to last you until the nuclear apocalypse. So... Uh, highly recommend. And then after that, uh, things that I use regularly is my center punch. So when you need to mark a hole that you're going to drill into, this is great because you just put it right on your mark and it puts a little indent and you can drill right into it. Uh, a screwdriver. This is just a cheap six in one screwdriver. Fun fact, you want to know why they call it a six in one. It seems like it would only be a four in one because you only get four different bits, two flatheads and two Phillips. But this is a different size than this. And so those are your extra two. That's your six in one. This is like a quarter inch hex nut. And this is a three eighths hex nut, which is, I guess, the most common one. So that's why it's a six in one and not a four in one. And some of them, if you get a seven in one, they'll have like a little hex nut right there too. Something else I use all the time is carpenter's pencils and like regular number two pencils. These I use mostly when I'm just super rough cutting, like cross cutting something with my skill saw just to break it down to get ready to mill it. Uh, also when I'm sanding, I use these all the time. You always see in my videos, every time I'm sanding, I rub it with pencil. Same thing with a hand plane. If you wanna make sure you're getting even cuts uh, on a flat piece of wood, you can use your pencil. And when you know, you know when the pencil's gone that everything is still flat. Uh, a glue brush, I use this obviously all the time whenever I do glue ups, it's great to have, especially for small stuff. It's good to not to have to look for these. And that's like the biggest thing about my apron that is great is I don't have to look for this stuff. And so, you know, you always have it. Uh, also, a Sharpie, uh, that's great for on metal or, you know, when I'm also rough, doing rough lumber. A razor blade, uh, I use these all the time. I have different knives on me all the time. This is a carpet knife that's really great. I usually have a maker's knife in here, but I had to bring that home because I had to break into my house because I locked myself out and couldn't find a way in and it was eight o'clock at night. So um, my maker's knife was at the house to help me do that. Uh, oh, if you're curious about what knife I carry, I just got a zero tolerance, three and a half inch SV30 assisted open knife. These are super nice. This is Gerber's high end line. They don't make a ton of these because they're really, really nice. Um, and this is just, so I, I've carried a knife since I was probably 16 years old. So it's been 20 years. And this blade shape is what I've always wanted. I have used a rounded sort of hunting style buck for 10 years and I loved it, but it wasn't until I've been using this for about three weeks now. And this flatter shape is so much better because what do you use your knife for most of the time? Opening boxes, it's not like you're, doing a ton of work with it. So um, highly recommend this knife. I'll link it below. I love it and it opens so awesome. So um, that's my everyday carry knife. Now here is a really S-H-I-T-T-Y ruler, but it's really cool because it has this uh, stop on it so you can sort of use it to measure squarely. But the only reason I have this, and I have two of these because I use it so much, is it has decimals to fraction conversions, which for me, I use all the time, all the time decimal to fraction conversions. This is great for, you know, doing the math and you end up with a fra uh, with decimal and you need to find the right size drill bit or when I'm doing stuff in fusion and fusion, you know, you put in a decimal and you wanna figure out what fraction that is on the tape measure. But I use these all the time and I absolutely love having some way to convert decimals to fractions. It just makes life so much easier. I keep two of these because this one has the decimals for eighth, sixteenths, thirty seconds, and sixty fourths broken out. And then this one is just all the decimals with their corresponding fraction on them. And then on this side, it has tap and die sets and what size drill bit you should use for different bolts. So uh, that comes in handy all the time. Oh, something I use way more than half that stuff is a notebook. In fact, this is the super cool Four Eyes notebook you get for being a patron. And uh, this thing's awesome, has lots of 
paper in it and it's got a ruler in it. This is a good thing to carry around all the time. Um, but this is just something I use super regularly. So I highly recommend you always have a notebook on you. Obviously my dust collector remote. I keep some zip ties in here. You never know when you're gonna need a zip tie. What else do I, oh, geez. I totally forgot. This is, I couldn't see it, but uh, this is definitely in the top five things I use all the time. It's a tape measure. This is the only Festool product I own and it is unbelievable for fine woodworking. It has both millimeters and inches. The first six inches are in 30 seconds. Uh, it has, it can do inside measurements. So you see these measurements here. If, you're, if you go to the inside of something, then it's that line rather than whatever line you are here. Uh, you can do circles. So you, it's got a little point on this and you put that on the dot and then you lock it in and your pencil goes right here in this hole and then you just hold, hold it down and you can use your pencil in there and it does the corresponding hole to, I believe the line, yeah, to the line. So that's the radius. Always a piece of sandpaper. It's great for, you know, after you make a cut, you can just sort of quickly run this along the edge to get rid of any fuzz. Uh, obviously sandpaper, good for lots of great things. If you glue something up and something's not quite meeting up, you can just kind of sand around it and that sawdust will go into the glue and hide your mistake. Although I know you guys never make mistakes. Another thing I keep in here that I use is chalk. This is great when you get bulk lumber. Uh, so, you know, you get some eight quarter lumber in the shop and you're planning out your pieces. You can say, okay, this is a leg and it comes off real easy, doesn't stay in wood, you don't have to commit to it. You're just trying to figure everything out and you have your cut list, you can sort of use your chalk to just figure that out. Random screws, those aren't that important. A uh, countersink drill bit and a pencil sharpener, which I never use because I use a knife. So that's everything that is in my apron. I'll, I'll link everything down below. Chris Salamone, Matt Cremona, John Malecki, and Sean Boyd. I'd love to see what you guys can't live without. And I'm sure your viewers would too. So make sure you challenge somebody when you put up your videos, guys. And thank you so much for watching. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day. <laughs>